How Can You Own the Sky is a journey that goes through time and explores the history of this region and an incredibly rich cultural tradition. It connects two different groups of people that are symbolized by the orchestra and by this incredible Native American ensemble that we're collaborating with. We believe that the arts, and in this case music and poetry and singing, have the power to make real change in the world. The musical theme that permeates the entire piece is a, is a melody that was created by our collaborator, Brent Florendo. And so at the very beginning of the piece, he and his ensemble, Dancing Spirit, sing and drum this extraordinary melody that they created just for this project. In a traditional way, we say we catch the song. You hear it in the trees, or you hear it in the wind, or you have an emotion or a feeling that comes to you and you sing it. And sometimes you hear something and you sing it, and then you bring it to your drum and it doesn't come. So I think it's not meant for you to, to have. So putting a piece together for Ethan and Tiziana really comes from a relationship that I built with them. I was able to catch this particular song that stayed with me. Between the stars and the earth, grandmother built a bridge on dragonflies' wings. I asked her, grandmother, where did it all begin? And she answered, before the stars, the earth, and the sky, before Santa The commission was about writing and creating a piece that would celebrate this valley. That's when I began to interview and hear the stories of the Native American leaders in this region. And I study and I heard the story from Ren Florendo and from Grandma Aggie. And out of their story and the research that I did for over a year, and then I could combine an arc and that would tell, that told the story um, of the, um, the injustices that were done, the beauty of the tradition. Planets and suns circled around each other, dancing to the beat of the heart of the Creator. It was a sense of sadness, but also hope that I wrote this poem as a way of redemption and reconciliation and healing. The sacred hoop complete. The giver returned to the sky and all life lived in harmony with Mother Earth. So this piece, How Can You Own the Sky, is put together in four movements. The first movement explores the creation of the world, and it does so drawing on legends of the Tequilma tribe. The combination of the drumming with the symphonic music was um, almost chilling. It's a symbol of these two cultures coming together in peace and harmony in, and through art. And I think that's so important. The second movement explores how the first people of the Rogue Valley in Southern Oregon came into harmony with their surroundings and with the landscape here. and it goes into our recent history of the 1850s with the Rogue River War and it, it gives a visceral, immediate experience of hundreds of people being forced off their land and 
taken to a place where they've never been at gunpoint and the immense psychological um, pain that has been passed down even today from that experience. movement we have this musical awakening where the solo violin wakes up the orchestra that's been traumatized they've been kind of knocked out and the solo violin is this healing element that wakes up each section of the orchestra one at a time and brings them back for this final uh, reconciliation and statement of, of hope for a new future. And through the course of the four movements of the symphony, they get to develop and interact with that melody in different ways that tell part of the story and finally come together in the very end all unified. We believe that by bringing audiences into this new musical world that combines the traditional symphonic music with the Native American element, we are creating a metaphor for two groups of people coming together. And we're also creating an opportunity to create real healing and reconciliation right there in the room. <laughs> 